We gather together with different experiences, different needs, and different gifts to offer. We are called to love and support each other following Christ's example. We gather as the family of God and the body of Christ. People of all sexual orientations, gender identities, races, beliefs, faiths, and abilities are welcome here. We share both the gift and the responsibility of God's creation. Our gathering is on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Ojibwe, Oji Cree, and Dakota people, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We strive to follow Christ's example of reconciliation and care. Welcome. Welcome to our worship for this Sunday. Welcome members and friends to neighbors. Welcome to people from any corner of the globe who sought us out or perhaps stumbled upon us, uh, those who may be checking in for the first time, uh, and those who have not worshipped with us for a while. Welcome to all of you to our worship this day. This season in the church here is known as the Sundays after Pentecost, the season after Pentecost. It's a non-festival portion of the church here, uh, and our focus is mainly on the ministry of Jesus, on Jesus' teachings and activities, in order that we may learn and grow in faith and be inspired to follow and serve. Our service uh, for today is a service of the word. As part of our worship, we will be having a blessing of the backpacks, a blessing for back to school as part of our children's message. And it will lead us to ask for God's encouragement and care as students, teachers, and instructors, and other educational staff return to the classroom. Due to the pandemic, uh, we have recorded our worship from various locations uh, in order to maintain physical distancing. I want to say thanks to everyone who's put together uh, different items and their hard work to make this service possible. You'll notice that this Sunday we are grateful for the sermon that comes to us from uh, Reverend Larry Kokendorfer, the Bishop for the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. Bishop Larry's emphasis is on the importance of relationships, and that will remind us um, how critical this is for life and how we are to live. It will also remind us of our relationship and care for creation. In this respect, uh, this service points us toward the season of creation, an emphasis that we begin next Sunday and that will end on Thanksgiving Sunday. And a reminder that even though we are physically apart, this worship is a meaningful gathering as we are joined to be together by Christ. God is with us and community is ours. So let us now join in our worship and praise of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
A reading from Exodus 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 149. Alleluia. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their ruler. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for the joy on their beds. Let the praises of the Lord be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all God's faithful ones. Alleluia. So, oh, good morning, and uh, how are you all doing today? Today we have something a bit special, um, as pretty soon, like this week or in the week to come, everyone's going to be returning to classes, to learning, to school. Um, now for this lesson, I want to give thanks to uh, Pastor Kirk Tastad from Holy Family Lutheran Church in Yellowknife for this idea and uh, some of the input into this lesson. You know, usually back to school is uh, a very exciting time and we're excited about being able to meet friends or make new friends or see the new classroom, meet the teacher, uh, show off maybe some of our new school supplies and that. This year, it's a little different. There's a little more concern and anxiety um, because of this uh, pandemic that's going around and there will be expectations to keep distancing and to sanitize hands and to wear masks. So it's a little different and I think some of us are going back to school and learning with some real anxiety or concerns about how this is going to work out. Now usually what we do is we have a blessing of the backpacks that we take where we take stuff in. Uh, for this year, I want you to take a pen and pencil and a card and write something on it. And what I've written on this card, it says, God is with me or God is with me always. Or if you want to do something different, you could write, Jesus says, I am with you always and write that on a card and then place it in a pocket in the backpack. Place it in there and have it with you as a reminder that wherever you go 
and whatever is going on, God is with you. That you don't face school alone, that you have family and you have friends and teachers, but God is with you. And I think that's an important thing to remember. And that God is there to um, encourage you, to help reduce your anxiety, and also to encourage you to care for and look for others. So write on it what you want, and you can take the card, and you can decorate it too, you can put your name on it, but carry it with you as a good reminder that you're not alone, that God loves you very much, and that God is with you. And to close this lesson, we're going to say this prayer of blessing. It's a blessing not just for the backpack, but especially for you and for everyone returning to learning in classes. So let's pray. Dear God, as we get ready to start another year in school, we ask for your blessing on the backpacks, on the note that we've included that reminds us that you are with us always, and on all the other items this backpack will carry. But especially we ask for your blessing on the children, the teachers, the assistants, the education staff, and all who will be starting this year of learning. As they do the very important work of education in this challenging time, bless them with the knowledge and peace that you are with them. Fill them with eagerness to learn that their world may grow large. Fill them with respect and care for the teachers and for one another. May they be able to follow health guidelines without difficulty. But may they also form healthy relationships with one another with a love for nature, becoming caretakers of your creation. May they find happiness when learning is easy and perseverance when it is hard. And may they have faith in Jesus as their best teacher and closest friend. We ask that you would guard and protect these your own children. Watch over them and keep them safe as they keep proper physical distance, as they travel to and from school, as they learn Help them to discover the different gifts that you have given to each one of them, that they may be used in your work in the world. And as they hear many voices that fill their days, help them to listen most carefully for your voice, the one that tells them that you are with them and that you will love them always, no matter what. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed return to school. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Welcome to the sermon series that our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada is providing for congregations throughout the summer months and into September. I'm Larry Kokendorfer, and I serve as the Bishop of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. It's great to be with you this Sunday. As I prepared for today's brief sermon, I want to acknowledge my appreciation for the writings of the Reverend Dr. David Laus, who can, currently serves as Senior Pastor at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church in Minneapolis, and the Reverend Dr. Caroline Lewis, Professor at Luther Seminary, St. Paul, Minnesota. I have significantly borrowed their wisdom and insights and their words in the shaping of today's sermon. Let us pray. 
God of grace and mercy, enliven and strengthen each faith community with a promise of your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin today by singing a simple text and a beautiful melody used with permission of the composer Bruce Harding. Where Two or Three Are Gathered was written as a gathering song for Sunday worship during the 2002 Easter season using the text of Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. The text of the song is very simple. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Please join me in singing as you become familiar with the text and melody. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. These words seem particularly poignant in our COVID-19 pandemic reality. A word for our present experience where many are gathered in twos or threes as families, as cohort units, as bubbles. A word of promise for this time that Jesus is with us, I am there. This word is good news for us this long weekend in our present reality. It's good news proclaimed elsewhere in this gospel according to Matthew 2. At Jesus' birth, the child is to be named Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the final words of this gospel proclaim a similar promise. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. As we enter today's reading, mindful of this good news of Jesus' promise, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I wonder if we hear today's reading as about rules or as about relationships. Are we here being given rules to live by? Or are we being invited to consider relationships over, well, over just about everything else in our life as followers of Jesus? I've most often understood this reading as about rules. And maybe you have too. Rules quoted in constitutions or bylaws about how we are to maintain order in the Christian community. I've heard them used by those who are more than eager to go and point out the fault of another. They've also been cited as a way of handling disputes and then used as a rationale of why someone should be shunned. If this reading is about rules, it's rather simple and straightforward. If someone offends you, confront them. If that doesn't work, try an intervention. If that fails, cut them off and toss them out. Excommunicate, exile, shake off the dust from one's feet, wash one's hands of the person and move on. But what if this reading is not about rules, but about relationships? What if it's not about providing simple and straightforward instructions, but about the never simple and often complicated work of building authentic Christian community? What if the intention here is not about systems or procedures or a rule book to follow, but more about reconciling and restoring to the community a sister or a brother, a sibling in Christ. And what if this gospel writer's primary concern 
is not actually about settling disputes within the community of faith, but, but about creating a space, environment, room, opportunity, where Jesus' presence, where two or three are gathered, is able to bring forgiveness, healing, joy, hope, and life. Let's briefly look at the context of today's reading. The verses immediately before tell of the shepherd's delight in restoring to the flock a sheep that has strayed and the command to beware despising others, even if those who seem of little importance. And the verses that follow set a new standard for forgiveness. First, multiplying Peter's sense of appropriate forgiveness beyond imagination, not seven times, but 77 times. And then suggesting that our ability to forgive others may be the key as to whether we ourselves are forgiven. Preceded by the story of the lost sheep and followed by a new standard for forgiveness, today's reading seen in its context is about relationships about community, about reconciliation and restoration. It is offered by someone who knows that relationships take work to maintain and that community is much more difficult to create and nurture than we might imagine. And that working out conflict and disputes as a community together, rather than simply declaring judgment, can be very, very hard. Jesus urges those in the faith community to have honest conversation in private with the offending party. No passive aggressive behavior, no triangulation, just straightforward conversation. This is so hard. I would rather complain to others about the one who has offended me than to talk to the offending person, but Jesus leaves no room for such behavior. If the offending member refuses to listen, Jesus advises bringing along one or two others as witnesses for further conversation. And if the member still refuses to listen, the matter may be brought before the whole community. And if the member refuses to listen to the whole assembly of the faithful, then and only then is the member to be treated as a Gentile, and a tax collector. Even here, dear friends, in the context of the gospel according to Matthew, a Gentile or a tax collector is not someone who is beyond the reach of God's mercy. For throughout this gospel, Jesus makes a point of reaching out to the Gentiles and tax collectors. Religious leaders were outraged that at every opportunity, Jesus extended himself graciously to them, even eating and drinking with them. He was known as a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Again, it's about relationships, about reconciliation and restoration, about forgiveness, healing, joy, hope, and life in community. And if it becomes necessary to exclude someone from the faith community for the sake of the integrity and well-being of the community, this is never a final judgment. A community shaped by Jesus, by his life, message, and cross is a community always seeking to restore and to reconcile. A community shaped by Jesus, by his life, message, and cross is a community always seeking to reconcile and to restore. Make no mistake, the work of seeking authentic community where two or three are gathered is hard, but also powerful and healing and an incredible witness. It is difficult, it is challenging to be sure, but also worth it, always. And when we grow weary following the path Jesus set, let us remind one another of the good news that we have Jesus' promise that each and every time we try where two or three are gathered, he is there with us. 
instructing us in the way of love, urging us on, forgiving us, and sending us to be a people, a community of reconciliation and restoration, accompanying us wherever we go. Join me in singing where two or three are gathered. In my name, I am there. I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community. Strengthen the economical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to oppression, division, violence, or death. Shape new paths toward equity, cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors, guide leaders and all citizens toward actions that uplift the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We remember all in our faith community, along with Tim, Bonnie, Victor, Earl, and all we remember now either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your guidance, encouragement, and strength for all students, teachers, administrators, education staff, and all their families as they return to classes and learning this week. Be with them, guard and protect them, that this education year would be safe and meaningful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
and receive a word of blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and fill you with peace. Amen.